Hey guys, I want to start a new series of videos that has to do with uh, physics that goes on around air guns. Um, this is actually one of my passions. Uh, I'm not really a physicist, actually I'm an electrical engineer, uh, but uh, I do love physics, I love everything about it. and. One of the main reasons I got into air guns is because of the physics that revolves around them. And I wanted to make a series of videos that go I go from topic to topic uh, explaining how each thing uh, works and why it works like it does. I will probably get into quite a lot of details but nothing we cannot manage and I won't be including any math or anything like that to make uh, these videos. Uh, complicated to understand or uh, hard to watch. So, without further ado, I would like to just say first of all that there, there are already uh, quite a few channels that has similar type of videos. Uh, one that I can personally recommend and I really like is Matt Dubbers from uh, Air uh, Arms Hunting in South Africa. Uh, it's called Air Gun 101, I think, or Air Guns 101 or something like that. I highly recommend that one. Um, so, as I mentioned, I'm not a physicist and also English is not uh, my native language, so please forgive me if I uh, use wrong terminology or if I say something wrong and feel free to correct me down in the comments below. Okay, so let's get to the first video and the first one is actually a topic that uh, it has been bothering me all this time that it was never really, at, la at least I didn't find any um, good content about it, it was never never fully explained and it has to do uh, with uh, pellet stability and velocity and things like that. Now there is a lot of uh, videos that explain that you shouldn't go too fast uh, with pellets because you, if you get into transonic velocities then the stability is lost because the pressure uh, is not even every slight mistake on a pellet slide uh, causes different pressure because uh, in transonic mode part of the air or, or around the pellet is already trans, uh, so supersonic and part is not. So I'll not get into this because this is quite well known and uh, it's well established that usually that happens at around Mach 0.8 so that's about 900 feet per second and that is true generally but I, I'm claiming that it uh, is not the reason why pellets make spirals. So I'm, I'm not saying that it's good to shoot at higher velocities, it's still uh, can have uh, destabilizing, uh, destabilizing elements uh, to it and it will for sure. Some pellets will take that better, other not so good. But I'm just saying that this is not the reason that the pellets spiral. And this is main topic of this first video, why pellets spiral. Uh, okay, so to begin with this, uh, first we need to understand how pellets are stabilized. And in classical air guns, uh, pellets are stabilized uh, two ways, basically by two methods. One of them is a so-called drag stabilization and this is something that uh, the pellet is responsible for so it has nothing to do with the gun or the barrel and that is basically that its center of pressure is behind its center of mass. This basically means like for example if you have a rock and you have a string tied to it and the feather in the end the center of pressure will be there in the back and the mass will be on the front. And that means that if you throw that, always the rock will be in front of the feather, right? So very easy to understand. Uh, but the second one is actually more common to firearms and of course always used in uh, basically all firearms uh, and also used in air guns despite the fact that air guns already use the stabilization of the pellet by drag. So this is gyroscopic precession. And this has to do with the fact that the pellet, slug, bullet, whatever is rotating around its axis on the way uh, through the barrel and the rifling is the thing that enables this rotation. And of course this uh, velocity, uh, so I should say RPM of the a pellet, it depends on the, how aggressive the rifling is, how much turn you have per inch or per, per whatever unit. Um, and in the end, uh, usually, usually it's uh, written by uh, 
uh, the length it takes for it to make the whole revolution around its axis. So it's usually the length uh, in inches. Uh, so it's if it's one in seven, meaning that it will make one revolution in seven inches, uh, or one in ten, one in twelve, whatever. So the bigger the number, the number below, the slower twist or the less aggressive twist. Okay, but let's get past it. So basically the pellet is stabilized by drag and pellets is stabilized by gyroscopic precession. Now before we continue, I have to explain what how gyroscopic precession works. And I have some props here. Actually, I have a helicopter here, with which I think it's the best way to understand how the gyroscopic procession is. So first of all, if you look at a prop compared to a bullet, a bullet would be like traveling down or for example like this, it will be traveling in this way or this way. Uh, that is how the analogy works. So if we look at the helicopter, it has what is called a swash plate and this plate controls the tilt of the blades at, on different position of its uh, full revolution. and. Uh, of course, if we want to go up, for example, the swash plate goes up and we see that we have a, what is called a positive tilt, meaning that now the air on this side will be pressed down and over here it will be lower pressure than here, so the helicopter will move up. And it's same all the way around. Okay, now if we want to move forward, then the swash plate, oh, just go to the middle first, swash plate tilts forward about, let's say, I will do this approximately. And here is a very interesting thing that we see. We see that, and I didn't do this perfectly, let me just try to correct it as much as I can. So a little bit low, let's go up like this, something like this, okay. And here you see a very interesting thing. Intuitively, you would think that here would be the biggest tilt, so here would be pushing the air down and here vice versa, pushing up, forcing it to tilt forward. But that's actually not the case. Actually here it's flat, it's straight. The biggest tilt is actually on this side. So basically here is pushing the air down and here is pushing the air up. Now you would think that this would make it to twist this way, but actually it doesn't, it, make it, it makes it push forward. And here is, uh, the, the reason for this is actually gyroscopic precession. And the easiest way to understand is uh, this is by thinking like it like this. This blade has to be higher here, right? And this blade, as it rotates, it has to be lower here. That means that if I want to achieve this, I will actually have to start to accelerate the blade up here in order for it to arrive higher here. And I will already have to decelerate, so force it, uh, start forcing it down over here and all the way here until the front side. So if you look at th this way, then you understand why actually on this point, the blade doesn't have to uh, push or pull in order to make this kind of movement. And of course, because this is a transition state. This is transition state where the, it has to be the highest point, but it's not accelerating up anymore. It has to start accelerating down. And this is basically has to do with the mass of the blades because the mass is what has to be pushed up because blades are heavy. If there were no mass on the blades, then in fact, you would have to push down the air here. But the mass has to be, uh, so uh, the, uh, the, the propeller has to overcome the mass of its own weight in order it for lift back on the backside. So this is probably the easiest way. And uh, if you pay attention to this, you notice that if you think about it, this is 90 degrees before its point of which you want the action to act upon. So the action, or I should say the reaction of the um, of the gyroscopic precession is 90 degrees tilted from its uh, original position. And this is actually where the, everything, uh, the issue with spiraling comes into play. So I, I have some other example here. For example, this is a, a spinner. I have to thank my daughters for lending me this one. So this has mass 
around, it has these ball bearings around and one in the middle. If I spin this really fast and I try to move it sideways, it will actually force me to uh, twist it like this. Of course, I'd ha I must not hold it too uh, tight, otherwise I will overcome that force. So let's test this. I so what I will do, I will spin it and then I will try to t tilt it just like this. And you will see that it also will tilt like this. So let's try. So you saw that I was actually doing this as well. So again, a good example of gyroscopic precession. Okay, now let's get back to the pellet. And for the pellet, this is my prop. <laughs> it's not the best, but it should do. <laughs> so, okay, what happens with the pellet? Pellet is, as we noticed in air guns that have uh, rifled barrels, stabilized two ways. So we set drag and gyroscopic precession. Now the big difference between the drag stabilization and gyroscopic stabilization is that what drag is trying to do is always face the pellet forward in terms of its trajectory. So if it's lying this way, it, if it's like this, it will try to correct it and force it to go straight. If it's flying this way, it will correct it and so it goes, uh, so it faces the same direction as its trajectory. Now it's different with the gyroscopic precession. Gyroscopic precession forces it to remain in the orientation it was before. And that means that if it was flying like this, it wants to remain like this. It doesn't want to change the orientation. And um, this is actually where the problem lies. The pellet should be flying like this. Usually it's a right-handed twist, right? So uh, it would usually twist like this. An anomaly occurs, for example, and the pellet is flying like this instead of straight. The drag will try to correct it and push it like this, right? And this is correct motion. This is what you want. You want to, for it to fly straight. If it travels like this, the uh, drag will try to push it like this. And by pushing it like this, this will create a gyroscopic precession force, which will actually try to twist it like this. And once it's like this, the, um, the drag will try to push it back and it will actually tilt it up. So it will start to spiral, it will go like this. And the more it goes off its uh, correct orientation, the more the drag will try to fix it. And the more the drag tries to fix it, the more the uh, gyroscopic precession tries to fix it, but with a 90 degree delay. And this is actually very well noticeable if you ever watch the pellet spiral, because you see it spiral in the left direction, despite the fact that the barrel are usually uh, clockwise or uh, right hand, uh, it will actually spiral to the left direction. So if a pellet is flying like this, it will rotate like this, okay? But the spiraling will be like this. So this is right, this is left, like this. It will be like this. So if I show it again, it will be like this. Always like this. And it will always be progressive because one X, the uh, one force of force of one stabilization X upon another and another one triggers even a bigger and it starts to oscillate. That's why the pellets, if they start to wobble, if they start to uh, spiral, they will spiral more uh, the further down the range they are. And uh, if bullets don't do this because bullets don't have drag stabilization because their center of uh, pressure is in front of their center of mass. And because of that, if they, for example, sometimes spiral, they will make just very short but right-handed spirals. And uh, these will not progress the further the, the, down the range that the bullet is. And uh, this is basically the reason for spirals. Now, why I am explaining this? I'm explaining this because uh, in uh, history of air guns, air guns started to be uh, as a, let's say, practice tool or something like that. It was meant to be close range. It was meant to be shot at low velocity and pellets were the most forgiving thing to shoot and the most, the lowest friction and things like that. So basically 
by that standard, uh, first barrels were developed and that barrels had the twist rate that they have right now still. So there was no development in terms of this. And this, this twist rate for close range, you want to have high twist rate, in, even in air guns, because the only reason why you actually need the twist rate in air guns on a pellet, we mentioned is drag stabilized. So why do you want to have additional stabilization? It's because as soon as the pellet leaves the barrel, uh, a lot of air is blown behind it so actually in terms it's flying against the wind in that terms because the air is faster than the pellet and at that point it's actually trying to flip it of course it doesn't because it, this effect doesn't go far from the muzzle of the air gun but still it uh, makes the accuracy uh, worse so that's why you want to have high twist because you want that initial stabilization to be good but you don't worry about down range and uh, if you want to shoot long range then you actually want a very slow twist twist on air guns because in that case even if this happens the twist rate the uh, rpm of the pellet and therefore gyroscopic precession is much smaller and even if the drag will correct it like this it will not make that immediate effect to twist it 90 degrees and start an oscillation process this uh, is also connected, of course, with the pellet velocity. And this is also the reason why usually you see spiraling if you shoot pellets really fast. Because if you think about it, the, the, the air gun barrel has a fixed twist rate. And if you shoot the pellet faster, it will have more gyroscopic precession because you have rotated it faster because it exits the barrel faster. So it makes the same amount of revolution in shorter time that's actually one of the way the ways that uh, the long range barrels uh, that uh, we developed together with rta uh, can shoot at such high velocity with pellets still being stable again i'm not claiming that there are not negative effects if you shoot at really high velocities you might get some problems but if you don't have high too high twist rate at least you will not get the spirals now it took me some while to really uh, understand this uh, this uh, physical phenomenon that the pellets go through, and once you think about it, you really it really clears up a lot of uh, a lot of myths that have been out there regarding velocity and that you shouldn't shoot at high velocities. Again, I'm saying it's true. Everything is true about high velocities. I'm just saying that this range, the how far you are shooting and uh, how fast you're shooting can be modified if you uh, uh, if your barrel is uh, appropriate for that uh, kind of uh, for that kind of velocities that kind of projectiles so uh, i'm i hope i i presented this uh, this knowledge in a correct way and that you understood everything i have a lot of other topics prepared from regulator to barrels to transfer ports so uh, if uh, you find this interesting, please let me know down in the comments and I will continue with this, uh, this uh, series of videos. Please feel free to comment below and also I am open to suggestions for other types of uh, uh, videos regarding uh, physics around air guns. So thanks for watching, uh, make sure to subscribe and uh, hit that bell button to get uh, informed whenever, whenever I release a new video. Thank you.